This is Katherine Nightingale of Chattanooga State Community College, and this video is for Linear Algebra Section 3.3, which deals with Kramer's Rule and Application of Determinants. When working problems by hand, Kramer's Rule is really only practical for 2x2 two two or 3x3 three three systems of equations. You'll see why when we do the calculation, because if you had larger systems, it would actually be more efficient to do your row reduction. Let's start by defining Kramer's rule. So we have Kramer's rule tells us um, that if A is an invertible n by n matrix, remember it has to be a square matrix in order to be invertible, and vector B is in Rn, then A sub i of B is the matrix obtained by replacing column i with the vector B. So each column has n entries and B has n entries because it's in Rn. Now what Kramer's rule tells us is that the unique solution of AX equals B has entries where the X sub I equals the determinant of A sub I of B divided by the determinant of A. And this is for all I 1 through N because our matrix is N by N. So we should have N entries in our solution vector. So this is for i equals 1, 2, all the way through n. Now, the reason we know that there's a unique solution of ax equals b is because we said that a has to be an invertible matrix. And remember, any time your coefficient matrix is invertible, you get a unique solution. Okay, let's start by applying this. Let's use um, this example, use Kramer's rule to solve the system of equations 4x1 plus x2 equals 6 and 5x1 plus 2x2 equals 7. Now you know how to easily solve this by putting it into an augmented matrix and row reducing, but we want to practice using Kramer's rule. So let's start by identifying our a and b. We have the system ax equals b a is the coefficient matrix 4, 1, 5, 2 using the coefficients of our x's and b is the solution vector 6, 7. Okay, now a sub 1 of b is obtained by replacing column 1 with my solution vector. So 6, 7 is now my first column and then the second column remains as is a sub 2 of b replaces the second column. So I have the first column is 4, 5, and the second column is now my solution vector 6, 7. So a sub 1 b, we replaced column 1 with b. And for a sub 2 of b, we replaced column 2 with b. So the subscript really tells you which column you are replacing with your solution vector. Okay, let's carry this forward to the new slide. So we have our matrices. We have A, A sub 1 of B, and A sub 2 of B. Now we want to find all their determinants. So I'm going to say the determinant of A, A sub 1 of B. I'll start with 6 times 2 minus 1 times 7, so I get 5. Remember, forwards diagonal minus backwards diagonal. Next, I'll do a sub 2 of b, so I get 4 times 7 minus 6 times 5, and I get a negative 2. Negatives are okay. And now I get determinant of a, which is 4 times 2 minus 1 times 5 which is equal to 3. 
So remember with a 2 by 2 it's always forwards diagonal minus backwards diagonal for the determinant. Okay, now I'm going to apply Kramer's rule. So I have x sub 1 equals the determinant of a1b, which is 5, over the determinant of a, which is 3. x sub 2 is the determinant of a sub 2 of b, which is negative 2, over the determinant of a, which is 3. And there's my solution. So I just plug in the numbers once I've found them. So I get my solution vector x is equal to 5 thirds minus and minus 2 thirds. Now I could do the same thing with a larger system. It would just take more work to figure out each individual determinant. Okay, let's look at one application where you might actually use this in engineering. So an application of Kramer's rule is in finding parameters. So this is used in differential equations. It's a tool for finding functions if converting a system of linear differential equations to S space under Laplace transforms. Now, if you're not in differential equations, um, that's okay. We're only going to focus on the linear algebra step of this process. But if you have seen Laplace transforms before, I am going to explain the steps that you would take using this process. Okay, so first step would be to start with a multivariable linear system of initial value problem differential equations. Again, if you're not familiar with what that is, that's okay. We're only going to focus on step three of this process. The next thing you would do if you were trying to solve your system of differential equations is you would use Laplace transforms to convert from a system of differential equations with independent variable t, meaning that the unknowns are functions of t, to a linear system of equations with independent variable s. So this is telling us that each of the xi are going to be functions of s. And what we do is we call s our parameter. We're solving for the parameter, or we're, we're parametrizing. Now this next step, step three, is the one that we will focus on in linear algebra. Okay, the part we will focus on is we know that the xi are each functions of s, and what we're going to do is use Kramer's rule to solve for the xi in terms of s, and then we'll find which s values yield a valid solution. So in other words, what we're doing is we're using Kramer's rule to solve for the xi, and then we're restricting s so that we don't divide by zero. So remember what we divide by in Kramer's rule is the determinant of a. So what we're really saying is that the determinant of a cannot equal zero. So that's the step that we will be doing in linear algebra. If you were working through the differential equation problem, then your last step would be to use the table of inverse Laplace transforms to find your x functions in terms of t. And these would be the solutions to your differential equation. So you can see that Kramer's rule can be used in other areas as an application tool for um, solving your differential equations. Okay, let's look at an example of this. So given a system with unspecified parameter s, use Kramer's rule to describe the solutions and determine the values of s for which the system has a unique solution. Okay, here's our system, 3s x1 minus 5x2 equals 3, and 9x1 plus 5s x2 equals 2. Now, the s's are considered to be part of the coefficients. So the s's are just going to be real number values, 
and then the x1 and x2 are our unknowns, our variables. <clears throat> so if I build my A, my coefficient matrix will be 3s, negative 5, and 9, 5s. So the s's go in as coefficients. And now my solution vector is, as usual, what's on the right side of the equal sign, so 3, 2. Carrying this forward to the next slide, I have my A is 3s, negative 5, 9, 5s, and my B is 3, 2. Now I want to find the determinant of A, so forwards diagonal minus backwards diagonal. Determinant of A equals 3s times 5s minus negative 5 times 9, which is equal to 15s squared plus 45. So we're really dealing with a polynomial here where s is our variable. Now remember, by Kramer's rule, we will be dividing by the determinant of A. And we know that we cannot divide by 0, so determinant of A will not equal 0. This is how we solve for our restrictions on S. So I know that the determinant of A is equal to 15s squared plus 45. I'm going to factor this into 15 times s squared plus 3 and set it to be not equal to 0. So we're kind of lucky on this problem because s squared plus 3 never equals 0. So this tells us there's no restriction on s. If we had gotten an s value that made it equal 0, we would say that s could not be those numbers. Okay, so we've checked for the restrictions. Set your determinant of a not equal to 0 and solve for the s. Now we want to actually find our x sub i. Okay, so we have our a and our b. Now, a sub 1b replaces the first column with the solution, so 3, 2, and then negative 5, 5s. Five and a sub 2b replaces the second column with the solution vector. So I have my first column is 3s9, my second column is replaced with 3, 2. Now I want the determinants. Remember, forwards diagonal minus backwards diagonal. Determinant of a sub 1 of b will be 3 times 5s minus negative 5 times 2, which is equal to 15s plus 10. And the determinant of a sub 2 of b equals 3s times 2 minus 3 times 9, which is equal to 6s minus 27. Now, I know I will want the simplest form for my final solution, so I want to go ahead and factor. So I get 5 times 3s plus 2 for my determinant of a sub 1b, and determinant of a sub 2b, so I factored, and determinant of a sub 2b is going to be 3 times 2s minus 9. So I factored there as well. And this just helps us to see if anything cancels in our final solution. Okay, now remember, x sub 1 is equal to the determinant of a sub 1b divided by the determinant of a. And so I plug them in. 5 times 3s plus 2 divided by 15 times s squared plus 3. Remember, we found the determinant of a on the previous slide. Now I want to simplify. So 5 goes into itself and into 15. 
So I end up with 3s plus 2 over 3 times s squared plus 3. And that's my x1 solution. x sub 2 is determinant of a sub 2 of b divided by determinant of a. So I plug those in. 3 times 2s minus 9 divided by 15 times s squared plus 3. 3 goes into itself and into 15. So I simplify. I get 2s minus 9 over s squared plus 3 times 5 on the outside. So those are my solutions, x1 and x2. Now we found on the previous slide that there are no restrictions on s. So this is my final solution. I found my x1 and my x2. They're each a function of s, and I have no restrictions on s because I'm not dividing by 0 for any s value. Now, if you were doing the dif differential equations problem, here's where you would look up your inverse Laplace transforms and get your solutions of your differential equation. So there is one application of determinants, Kramer's rule, which can be used to find solutions of systems of equations.